Welcome to the Heaven Series with Randy Kay. I am delighted to bring to you our special guest, Alicia Reyes. Alicia's story will absolutely amaze you and also bring you closer to the Lord. Uh, Alicia died in childbirth and she met Jesus in heaven. So Alicia, it is great to have you with us today. Thank you for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. It is humbling and it is an honor uh, to be able to, to share my testimony um, in hopes that we can bring Christ into the hearts and the ears of your listeners. Well, the honor is ours. And yes, I am confident that you will bring uh, the heart, uh, closeness to our Lord Jesus, Yeshua, uh, through your story and through your sharing and your tenderness of heart really has impressed me uh, as you shared your story with me and with uh, others. It just is an amazing story. So let's uh, get right into it, Alicia. Uh, what led up to, to your dying in childbirth and then your account in heaven and meeting Jesus? Please share. Yep. Yes, Randy. Um, I had had a very difficult natural childbirth um my son he ended up having his umbilical cord wrapped and so they ended up having to do an emergency c-section on me after many hours of natural labor um so the bot my body was really uh, stressed um what ended up happening is once i had surgery my husband was present on the operating table and um, I started to seizure. Um, my, I started to crash, basically. My blood pressure um, dropped. And I was able to give birth to my baby, you know, because with, of course, with the assistance of the doctor and the nurses that were attending me, um, it was very delicate. They knew, they understood that um, it had become high risk. Um, but I think as professionals, they were trying to keep my husband and I um, somewhat at peace so that we wouldn't stress any further under the circumstances. And um, I remember that once I saw, I remember I, I heard baby cry. It was my baby boy. It was our first son. And this happened uh, November 13th, 2004. Um, after many hours of labor, like, like I shared. And um, I remember that my husband was next to me and I was just trembling, basically seizuring. Um, I was very, very cold mm. and I was starting to lose consciousness um, even though they had given me medication, you know, the epidural for the pain and, you know, uh, I mean, for, to be able to deliver C-section wise and all. But um, I remember that I turned to my husband and I asked him, you know, is, is, is baby okay? And he said, he, he turned to me and kind of concerned, you know, about both the baby and I and just everything happening all at once. It was very, a very busy, um, stressful um, moment for all of us, very mixed emotions. And I remember that he said, yes. And, um, and then all of a sudden I found myself no longer here on earth. Um, it's a little overwhelming to remember, mm. um, but it is with great joy that I remember this. Um, the first moment, the first moments that I realized that I was no longer here on earth was when I opened my eyes suddenly and I saw all around me what appeared to be um, a mist, many clouds surrounding me, my, my body, um, my arms, my surrounding my chest. And I knew instantly, I knew that I was in a very holy place. Mm. Um, I was overwhelmed with the peace that our Lord bestowed on my soul 
It was instantaneous. Um, it is very hard to explain in words. It's almost an injustice. The emotion that you feel when you transition. I remember seeing, like I, like I shared, the clouds surrounding me, a mist, and it was pretty heavy. I remember floating. Um, I could not see my feet, but I could see basically um, the shape of my arms, you know, my, I, I was aware. My clothing, it was no longer a, a hospital robe. It had changed. Um, I was glowing. It, it was a very, uh, very pure light that surrounded my, my soul. Um, and then I looked up because it was incredulous. It was many emotions all at once, but it was overwhelming joy. And I remember looking up, you know, as I, as I realized, okay, what's happening? And I looked up and I see at a distance approaching me a group of the most holy souls that, um, that have come before us. We, we have heard the story of many of them. Um, I recognized, although I would not have known who they were here on earth, um, but I immediately, my soul recognized as they approached me and they got closer, that it was, it was a multitude of about um, several hundred, a few hundred people and all ages. And I, I recognized Moses. I recognized Elijah, Noah, Ruth. Um, forgive me as I look up. It's just because re I'm remembering. Yes. And, and they approached me very gently and surrounding them all around were seraphim. They were little angels, um, larger angels. And Many, many people, many of the souls were praising our Lord Jesus mm. simultaneously in different languages, but I understood them. Um, they were, it was as if it was one song, one prayer, even though it was multitude of prayers happening all at once. And they were glorifying our Lord. Mm. And so it was at that moment that I realized, I knew that it was a welcoming committee that was welcoming me into a very holy place and in reverence I remember that I felt unworthy for a moment mm -hmm. you know and I said I smiled and uh, I could hear their thoughts I could hear their prayers but it was and I could hear them communicating and their speech but it was telepathically um, it was it was different and I was aware it was so many things happening all at once and um, they approached me and they, they welcomed me. And, um, and then as I walked or floated, I should say, it was really, I was, my soul floated towards them and they towards me. Um, I noticed the detail in their robes. Um, one was wearing like a golden cap. Like a, it was um, an old ancient style cap and you know the details in their robe very shiny some one of them had a red a little red hood like a little cap um and they were dressed brilliantly in robes uh very clear very translucent um praising god and then suddenly you know very reverently and they were praising our lord jesus very reverently they opened because they were in a group, in a cluster. And so they opened the pathway. And then I see immediately my soul recognized. And it was our Lord Jesus coming towards me to approach me and, and to welcome me into heaven. And uh, forgive me. And I remember that it was just so overwhelming seeing our Lord Christ, our Lord Jesus. His beauty, his, his aura, his pureness the goodness just radiated and they all turned in reverence as they had faced me for a moment to welcome me they suddenly turned towards him sideways you know they turned and they reverently praised him and um i remember that i went uh that i, I approached him and he turned you know at a, at a, for a moment 
Um, and I could see behind him were many at a distance. We floated in a group. We floated. And uh, I was in awe. I didn't really know much of what to say at that moment, except I, I, he knew my heart. He, he, will, he will be able to hear our thoughts. And of course, you know, he is our Lord. And um, he understood the overwhelming emotion that was overtaking my humanness, you know, still that, that. And he turned and he wanted me to see what was at a distance from him because we were on top of a, of a mountain, on top of a cliff, on a precipice. So we all floated forward and he showed me and so did the, the holy souls that were there, showed me at a distance, uh, a couple of miles, several miles at, at a distance from us on another cliff. So it was two cliffs like this. We were on one and on the other, there was a distance of space an abyss between us, very deep abyss. So on this mountaintop, I saw a multitude of souls that were still wearing their earthly clothing. Um, some of them were dressed in, uh, in just houseware, uh, uh, clothing, household clothing, like moms, you know, that are doing chores at home or maybe older ladies like grandmothers or aunts that are maybe grocery shopping or driving or going someplace. And they were just dressed in regular daily wear. And I saw, I recognized other soul. I mean, I didn't know who they were, of course, but I saw that other souls were wearing um, business outfits. Some were wearing uh, construction uniforms um, with a hard hat. And those details, they, they stick to me still to this day, 17 years later, because it was, it was overwhelmingly um, sad to, to understand all at once where I was and the difference of where they were. And the souls were walking basically they were coming towards the edge of the cliff and falling, falling, many, all ages. They were adults. They were adults of all ages, some very elderly, some young adults. Um, I saw no children. I remember that. I saw no children. Um, and I understood that they were passing the soul, these souls. It was hundreds, hundreds of them. Um, it was the end of their lives suddenly. And some of them must have maybe been, for example, the construction worker. Um, I did not know what had, had, had occurred to lead him to that point, but I understood that how he was dressed, he was, something had happened that suddenly caused his death and he was falling along with the other souls of all ages dressed differently. Um, I recognized that some people were dressed in, according to their culture, there were some Hindu um, people. I remember an, an Indian woman, she was dressed in her Hindu uh, robe and she was falling. There was um, older men with a, a white beard uh, dressed and almost like in a flannel shirt, you know, the details stick to me and they were falling and, and it was all at once. And I, I remember seeing and my heart was sad for them. And I turned and I, uh, you know, looked at Christ and he needed me to see this, to share. And I understood and it was it was almost terrifying to see, um, but also it was a mix of emotion, terrifying and sad. And it grieved, it, it grieved my heart very much because many of them, as they approached the edge, were angry or they were indifferent. Mm. 
I could hear and I could sense their final thoughts. They, they were upset. They were impatient. They, uh, it was just a number of negative emotions as they fell over, in, over the cliff into this abyss. And the holy souls, as they were near me, or, you know, surrounding me, and they had escorted me with Christ leading us to see this, they stopped me from reaching the edge. They did not want me to approach the edge of, you know, of that cliff. They allowed me to walk only to a distance or to float to a distance to see what was happening on the other side of the souls falling and falling. And um, Alicia, remember- Alicia, if I could ask just, cause this is um, a, a view that the Lord gave you of those who were, uh, their lives were being ended and they were yes. falling off of this cliff. So yes, correct. your sense at that point was that they were not entering into heaven. Correct. Uh, yes. And so you were on another side. Do you think the, or was the place that you found yourself on the other side of, you know, this chasm between one cliff and the other, that that was heaven where you were with, with uh, the angels and who was with you on that side? Yes. I believe that it was almost as it, as it was the gates into leading into the entrance to heaven. Mm-hmm. Um, and they, the, the holy souls, Moses, Noah, Elijah, Abraham, um, Ruth, they stood out. Um, from my childhood, uh, stories, reading, learning about them in Bible school. And, I, you know, it, it was just an instant recognition. But I understood that it was a very holy place where I had suddenly transitioned into. But I do believe that it was the entrance in the gates of heaven where they were greeting me uh, basically and had opened that uh, the pathway so that I could see. And for me to be able, for them to escort me and to be able to see what was at, happening at a distance, um, it was a spirit, another, it was a spiritual realm and they needed me to understand at that moment, of course it was, I didn't know what was happening, but suddenly immediately my soul understood that I was in a safe place, in a pure place in that area, surrounded by the holy souls compared to the other, other side. And I remember that um, Jesus at that, after uh, in those, those brief moments of allowing me to see this happening of the souls falling over into the abyss, it was a very dark place that I sensed was in that chasm. And it was anger, despair, mm. um, brokenness that spewed out. Um, and it was just an emotion or a, a number of emotions that was radiating from that area. And I remember that the holy souls were, it was understood to not go closer, to just be witness to this happening and, but to keep a distance. Hmm. And yeah. well, all of this time, so you had flatlined uh, yeah. after delivering your son. Yes. And so you were clinically dead at this point. And so you were ushered into uh, heaven. Would you say this was heaven? Yes. And, uh, and you saw all of these biblical giants that were with you and the angels about you. Um, this stands out, obviously, Alicia, because there are those who are watching this or listening and and saying, is this, is this hell? Is this, are they falling into a space that is hell? That is, they were, uh, non-believers or whatever it is that, that, uh, caused them to fall off that cliff into the darkness where there were all of these horrendous, uh, emotions and, you know, evocations that were going on. So. Correct. What is what were there any uh, messages that you were hearing uh, on your side that were being spoken to you by the Lord Jesus or any of the other angels uh, or at, souls? Yes, at that moment, Christ was quiet, as though he needed me to observe this, so that I, 
at, of course, at that moment, I didn't understand everything at once, but um, I now in hindsight, 17 years later, I'm able to understand very much that Christ needed, needed me to see this so that I could come back and share this with our community, with our, our family members, our friends, um, even those that have, uh, have been distant in, you know, in my life, I've tried, I've tried to, to minister, I've tried to share the story. Um, my sons and my husband are very much aware, and I've shared this with very few friends in, as a private testimony, mostly when we've gotten together, like in a family um, environment over the years. And I've been received with mixed emotions from my relatives, um, some positive and some in disbelief, but most of them have been very positive. Um, my heart understood, my soul understood that Christ needed me to bring back this message of that there are many souls that are unprepared and he needs us to be prepared um, every moment of our lives. Because when he calls us, when our Lord, when Heavenly Father calls us home, there is no, oh, hold on a second. I, I need to take this phone call. Or, mm -hmm. oh, hold on. I, I need to take care of the baby. Or I, I need to get to my, I need to drive and get to my job because I have a scheduled, no, a scheduled meeting or an appointment or I'm on vacation or, no, no. When Heavenly Father decides it is time to come home. You, I have given you your life for this period of time and I have given you instruction to serve me, to minister to others about the trueness uh, to be a Christian, to, to, be, to testify that he is a living God. Um, and many of those souls, I, I realized and I saw that they were not prepared they were living, unfortunately, many of them, I sensed immediately, uh, you know, after kind of getting my bearings of what was happening to them, um, it was understood very clearly that they were unprepared. They were angry. They were bitter, uh, broken. Some of them were extremely mm -hmm. depressed, unhappy. Some were indifferent. Some of them were complaining, but I remember that many, many of the, of the emotions that were coming, it was negative. I, didn't, I do not remember seeing any of them smiling or being at peace with our Lord. Um, and they were just falling. Uh, my understanding was that they were falling into a place that was not heaven. Mm. And it was a dark place. Yes. It was. Mm. So you're seeing this, and this must have caused, or did it cause, uh, some uh, sadness on your part. And how, uh, we'll get to the part where you, where you returned. Yes. Uh, but uh, what was, who or what was speaking into your heart as you were looking at these situations that, uh, you know, were, were very hellacious and um, and saddening. Were yes. you feeling that sadness? Yes. And were there any others uh, like Jesus or any of the others that were speaking to you to kind of explain what was going on? Mm -hmm. No, no. Um, it was, I could understand and I could hear telepathically that they were being reverently res and re being reverent and respectful of the presence of our Lord Jesus Yes. And they were being very obedient. And even though they were in prayer, quiet, quiet prayer, um, the singing that had when I when they welcomed me, the singing of the angel, the, the heavenly angels and the singing and the praises that the holy souls had been praying had the volume had lessened because they needed me to pay attention and be aware of what was happening before us across on the other side mm. and 
it was they, they did not uh, have to explain to me. I understood very clearly. Um, after you know a few moments, uh, I realized, and they didn't have to explain. I could hear the thoughts and the anger and the the impatience of the the souls that were falling, you know, from that mm -hmm. cliff. They were falling into the abyss, and it was dark. And there was mist, there was clouds all around us. Even there were clouds, you know, up until the edge. Mm. But I remember that, that there was a darkness in that abyss. Mm. And it just, it was, uh, my understanding, it was hell. It yes. was. Um, yes. And many of the souls, unfortunately, were not many people of all ages, male and female, of all cultures, of all races, were not prepared. Um, mm. You know, death, death had caught them by surprise. And I believe Lord Jesus was allowing me to see this because he needed me to under, to come back and share with my loved ones and friends, and of course now a greater, a larger community, the importance of our love and trust and belief, the importance of having complete faith in Christ our Lord mm. and living by faith. Uh, it's, it's not something to be taken for granted. Um, we don't know, suddenly, you know, we could have a, a, an accident and our life is taken from us. Um, we could be somewhere and unprepared um, at home or traveling somewhere or in our sleep, um, out, you know, with a friend or at work or at school. And it is so important that we be ready um, yes. day by day. Every day, day by day, and moment by moment, it is so important that we be, we, each one of us be right with Jesus, with our, with our Lord, with our Lord God. Yes. It's a very sobering revelation that you received in heaven or from heaven, uh, yes. giving you the vantage point of the other side. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll be giving, uh, for those who are uh, seeing this or hearing this, we'll be giving you the opportunity really to pray with us. Um, I'll be asking Alicia to pray uh, both in Spanish and in English for our uh, viewing audience and listening audience uh, so that you are on the side of heaven. Yes. So that what you saw really, uh, Alicia, sounds like a warning to, to many that you know we have to be prepared and of course there's the parable of the wedding feast and those who were prepared with their lanterns were lit and they were expecting the lord uh, those are the ones that participated in that feast yes. um, let's uh, go from this uh, very uh, sobering revelation that you saw a uh, sight from the vantage point of heaven to a place that was uh, was hell, uh, that to now what happened subsequent to that event? Yes. Um, as I saw the souls, you know, um, all ages, the men and women and um, the young adults, and as they fell, you know, my heart grieved. And But I remember that uh, after a few moments, I can't really say how much time had passed, but it was a few, a few, a good while of seeing this, of witnessing this. Then the holy souls that were to, that were surrounding, that had wel the welcoming committee of of holy souls, they ended up, uh, and Christ, of course, they waited for him, for Lord Jesus to come and approach me, and then they reverently closed the half circle behind him. And they were very respectful of our Lord and in prayer and bowing down to him and still praying, but of course, in, in a quieter tone. Um, mm. And I remember, excuse me, that um, 
at that moment, you know, as they enclosed the group back to how they were when they greeted me, you know, how they were like this. So the opening for me to be able to see what was happening at a distance closed and they remained in prayer. I saw many angels, you know, and they, they were very reverent praying and praising our Lord in different languages and in different song. And it was so beautiful. Um, very misty still, uh, but radiating, you know, and Jesus approached me and he came closer at this point because he was still at a distance from me, right? So he he did come towards me as the, as the souls closed behind them, the, the group, um, they, you know, floated together and Jesus was in front of them and he, he approached me and I saw the beauty of his face mm. and I saw the pureness and the goodness the love that he has for each one of us, you know, that love that no words can explain. It is an emotion that is beyond overwhelming. My senses were heightened. Um, I could hear, I could see at a, at, you know, I could, I understood in a, in a greater complexity, what was happening simultaneously all at once, you know, um, all around and in front and, and um, of course the sadness, you know, of what had, I had witnessed had suddenly changed to glorifying and praising mm -hmm. uh, my, my Lord God and King, my, my, you know, Jesus Christ. And I was overwhelmed and I was like, I, 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 he, he could hear my heart. He could hear my thoughts. And I was, you know, just very reverent um, in awe. I was in awe of him. Mm. And then um, I remember that, you know, the details of his, he was tall. He, he was, I would say about uh, close to, uh, or around six feet. Uh, Cause I am about, I am about five, six. So he was significantly taller. I, I remember the details of his face. Um, you know, him opening his hands to, to greet me in a hug, you know, but of course in an embrace, but he did not hug me, but it was like welcoming me, right? And I remember seeing the scars on his hands, but he glowed, he glowed. And it was such a pure, he glowed brighter and more brilliant than the holy souls around him. And his, he had a softness to his features um, his eyes, his, his smile, um, and his hair. It was like a, it was a brown, it was long. Um, it was a brownish color, but not a dark brown, but a lighter brown. And he had a beard. And he, he looked to be in his early 30s. Um, that I remember the details of, you know, all that at once. I because I've had a few friends who have asked me, "What did he look like?" or "What did you? Re what do you remember of of Jesus?" And those details definitely stand out. Um, was he kind of a Middle Eastern looking? Yes. Figure, yes, that was my experience as well. Yeah. Uh, and and so, did he speak to you directly? I know that you were having this impartation that was going on, this uh, yeah. transmutation or whatever you want to call it that was happening in communication, not by words mm -hmm. uh, that are audible words, but that is an impression to you. Is that, did he speak to you? Yes, yes. Uh, at that moment, and uh, forgive me, because I look up because I remember that I, when I look up and as, as I share the story, um, I remember that Jesus at that moment, you know, that he allowed me to see his, his pureness, the, the glory of, of his, of his, of him, of our, of our savior. Um, suddenly I remember that I turned, you know, I mean, that I realized that my humanness returned for that moment. And I remember that I, after being in awe of him and just uh, overwhelming love and peace and that, joy that overwhelming emotion of goodness and pureness and knowing that i was safe um suddenly i remember that 
you know, that he, he'd said my name. He said, um, hello, Alicia. And, uh, and at that moment, you know, as I heard him speak, I realized, or I, I believe that Christ, uh, Heavenly Father, allowed me to feel the human emotion because of everything. You know, I remember as he greeted me, he said, hello, Alicia, um, were his words, his first words to me. And I said to him, with great sadness, after great joy, with great sadness, I said to him, please, Lord, let me return to go back to be a mama to my baby, please. Mm. And it was the, that human emotion that mm. suddenly overtook. And I remember he was so gracious, Randy. You know, he looked at me, of course, you know, and he said, yes, yes, of course. Mm. And instantly I came back. At that moment, I came back. But it was with his permission, pleading with him, you know, please, Lord, let me come back to be a mama to my baby, my newborn baby. And I cannot really say how much time had passed from when I transitioned to when I came back, but I know that it was a, a it was a while. It was quite a long time to, um, to be able to have witnessed so many details of the, of the pureness and the goodness and the peace. And then the sadness that was occurring on the other side of that, of those cliffs, you know, on, we were on one side and then that dark, large, never ending was an endless abyss and then seeing what was happening on the other side. And then him allowing me to come close to him, but I did not touch him. Um, mm. And I remember that um, just feeling unworthy, I guess is the word, humbled, humbled. I remember feeling, um, like, wow, my Lord, you chose me to experience this with a purpose, something that is much greater than who I am, than these dry bones. You know, he needed, he needed you, Randy. He needed me to see him with a greater reason uh, to come back and to share the truth to share the realness of who he is of of heavenly father you know um to allow for us to allow and to believe and allow him into our hearts and to believe and to trust with with all as much faith possible in him no matter the hardness and the the harshness the trials that we face here on earth we are not meant to be here. We are meant to be here only for a short time and he's gonna call us home. And he's waiting to see that we have lived a purpose, purposeful life, that it has not been wasted, that it has, he asks of us to not be like those souls that he allowed me to witness. He doesn't want us, any of us, young and old to be unprepared. Um, yes. Alicia, that's a very profound message uh, that you just conveyed here and in your experience in heaven and on the other side in viewing these things. Um, when you had pleaded with Jesus to return so that you could be a mother to your newborn, and he said yes, uh, was there, was that the point at which uh, you were revived and found yourself uh, at a point. And tell us a little bit about that and how that transition happened for you. 
having yes. seen now what you have seen and, and also what, what happened? Was it just an instantaneous moment of time where uh, Jesus said yes, and then you were back here with on this earth? Yes, yes, that's correct. Mm -hmm. yes. Um, I was still in the hospital bed and um, the doctors and the nurses were around me and my husband had been, my husband was still in the room, but he had been, I, my understanding was, cause I was still kind of out of it with medication. I, I was able to sense my human feelings and emotions at that moment all over again. Um, and I realized okay, I'm, I am back. I am back. But even the, and I felt the grogginess of all the medication, um, the, the stress on the human body, having gone through hours and many hours of labor, natural, and then having to go into the C-section. And then the, it was just too much shock. The body had gone into shock from all the stress. So I was feeling the after effects at that moment. But I remember... Mm -hmm still feeling a great amount of peace. And I turned as I, you know, very groggy, I turned and um, they had a mask on me. They had a lot of medical equipment on me. Um, they, they were running um, an IV, the nurses were chattering. So uh, they, they were glad, I remember. They, they were grateful, they knew that what had happened was that I had passed, but they were able to revive me. And my husband had basically been escorted to, to leave and stand at a distance because he didn't want to leave because the baby was there, everything, everything had happened. Um, I don't know how much time had lapsed here on earth, but um, the nurses were, were grateful. I could see it in their faces that as they stood by my bedside, that uh, okay, she's she's here, you know, she's she's good, she's okay. Uh, as they talked, and my husband finally was allowed to get close to me, and he was in tears, and mm. uh, I couldn't really speak to him uh, because of the mask and all, and uh, the oxygen, you know, and so I remember, you know, just looking up to the side and just kind of basically with my eyes, letting him know that. I was, I was okay now, you know, and, and that I was happy and grateful to see him. Um, and he, I remember trying to reach for the, for the mask. And again, what I asked of him was, um, he was able to help me get the mask away. And I remember that I, I, got, I must have mumbled to him, but he understood that I was asking for the baby. Um, immediately, you know, that was, those were my first thoughts, uh, baby, baby. And, and he's like, he's okay. He's okay. Mm. And I said, okay, good. And then I, I fell asleep. Mm. I, I did fall asleep, I guess, from the, the stress, the trauma on the body, and then the medicine that they had given me, um, and just needing that rest after the, the very intense labor and then, uh, you know, passing away and then coming back, being revived. Um, I know, I, I'm just grateful. Uh, I'm grateful that, that our Lord was able to give me the privilege of coming back to be a mom. Um, two years after my, our firstborn was, was born, you know, 17 years ago, two years later, our second son was born. And it was not as, as traumatic. <laughs> it was not, yes, it was, uh, that one was a scheduled uh, C-section. So everything, you know, uh, was more, it, it was done in order, basically, like there was um, more structure to my second, yes. my second delivery. And yes, I'm, I'm just yes. grateful. You know, Alicia, we have received so many messages from people who are going through trials, some very severe. Uh, they have really uh, sometimes doubted their faith, mm -hmm. doubted whether they're saved, whether they are going to be on the side of heaven or the side of hell, as you saw in these yes. figures. Uh, 
us are walking off the cliff, basically. Mm -hmm. uh, and so what assurance can you give based on your experience? Because you have, a, uh, I believe, an evangelical gifting. You know, you're speaking with a tenderness of heart, so not in a condemning way, but yes. the sadness that our Lord has in seeing those who walk away from him or deny him. And Correct. basically, and I, I love the visual, I don't, love is probably not a good word. I like the visual in that uh, it is so distinct that people are walking off the cliff, but there yeah. are those that need an assurance that, you know, I love the Lord. I just, you know, I question my faith. Do you have a word for those people based on your experience in heaven? Yes. Yes. I would want to share Randy with them that the purpose of, of our life is not for ourselves, but it is truly, we were created by our Lord, by heaven, by our heavenly father with a purpose um, to serve, to serve him, to, he created us for his glory. Uh, not to live selfishly, not for our, our wants, our desires. Our, and, and if people, if most of, 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 our list, of your listeners would, would be able to be more open-hearted and willing to understand that Heavenly Father is so patient. He is very loving and, mm -hmm. and very caring and he understands that we're going through so many hardships here on earth, um, but he needs us to trust and not allow the hardships, the trials and the tribulations that we're facing day by day. He doesn't want us to harden our hearts because of those things. He wants us to still continue to understand those, those sacrifices that we're facing those trials, the hurt, the sadness, sometimes the overwhelming stress that we might feel parenting or through our jobs or any number of things through our health issues. He desperately wants every soul to trust fully in him and not doubt in his love for us, in his wanting us to return one day when our life has come and, and gone, when we have served our purpose here on earth, he wants us to return home to him. He doesn't want us to be lost into that darkness, into that abyss. You know, he, um, I feel that, that our Lord Jesus was able to show me in that moment um, that he, need, he, he wants each one of us to just fully, um, unashamedly trust in him, even though that's really hard sometimes because maybe something is so overwhelming that it breaks our faith, um, a past event or something that we're currently going through, or maybe something in the future that's going to test our faith, but we cannot give in to the enemy. The enemy will try to discourage and distract us. Um, that is its purpose, to discourage our belief, our faith in, in our Lord, and to distract us. Yes. And are, that's the world. You know, those are things that are not of God. It's, oh, you know, you have to have this, or, oh, I don't feel uh, entertained. Like, oh, I, I want entertainment. I, I don't want to pray right now. Right. Want, no, no. It's a disciplined walk. Yes, we yeah. must continue to be focused um, daily and in, in our Lord. And it's so important that we remain in prayer in the morning, throughout the day when we're about to have our meals, when yes. we're driving, as we're traveling, you know, continually have a conversation with our Lord. He, he doesn't ask, uh, he, he doesn't force us. Um, he doesn't ask, you know, of, of great, great things of us. Uh, he asks that we simply 
trust that we try our mm. best in our own humble ways. It doesn't have to be in grandeur. It, it's, it can be in the most simple way. Um, thank you, Lord Jesus, for my health this morning. Or, you know, thank you, Heavenly Father, for my job and for the food on my table. Thank you for the home or my apartment. Thank you for my vehicle. Thank you for my health. All those little moments are prayers as yes. we think, if we thank him with a full heart. Yes, and it's a continual dialogue that uh, Heavenly Father wants us to have with him. I agree with you wholeheartedly, Alicia, that it is a continual dialogue. And it's important for that Thanksgiving to be uh, foremost, that is, uh, that we give our Lord thanks. Yes. Because uh, what you're explaining is kind of a, a challenge of our own nature in that God's attention is exclusively on us, but we have difficulty focusing uh, exclusively on him. It is a disciplined walk. I have a kind of an aside question. We're going to be wrapping this up uh, here soon, but I know that uh, you had met some of those that a number of people have said that they wanted to meet in heaven, one of whom is Noah. Uh, can you just explain to me what, what they are, explain to our audience, that is, what they look like? Oh, yes, absolutely. Yes. Um, Noah was a little bit bald. <laughs> and he did have, he did have like a white um, hair, like, a, I guess, he, he wasn't completely bald, because he did still mm -hmm. have what I recognized as white hair, you know, here mm -hmm. on, on his sides. And he had a beard. Um, mm -hmm. and he was wearing a robe and it was almost, um, it was almost like a, like a, a, a lum luminescent, uh, almost like the lamp behind you, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. but it was a, a pure light, his robe radiated. It was glittery, shiny, and, um, and I don't remember mm -hmm. Noah wearing um, a hat. I do. I do remember Elijah and Moses. They were wearing um, hats. I say hats, but it was like a type of, uh, like a little. It was shaped like a little red, um, uh, like a little red cap, but mm -hmm. it was just placed above him, uh, almost like the the little. I don't. I forget what it's called the attire that is that is black that is put on top of jewish gentlemen. oh yes yes uh, but it uh, was red this one was red yes. this was red uh -huh. oh interesting yes and, and then mm -hmm. and then um um uh, moses um i'm sorry it's because it was i'm trying to remember the details moses had he was wearing the um, it was more of a golden. It was more of a like a golden, but it was not round. It was mm -hmm. almost like a little, like a little, the detail was like a little peak here. Ah, uh -huh. yes. Interesting. Interesting that the Lord would have those individuals greeting you on yes. this journey. Yes. And then they uh, wore um, like a banner across. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Ruth had a hood. I remember Ruth. Had a hood. Mm -hmm. Yes. And she was also like in a pure, in a, like almost like a beige, but a very light, like a pearl color. It was a pearl mm -hmm. color robe. And mm -hmm. she was very, very reverent. Mm. Mm -hmm. And just, and I remember the angels, some were extremely tall. And I mean, over 10 feet is what I remember, you know, it, it, in human terms, they were extremely tall, their wingspan, they, they were not with their wings out, but they were with their wings closed in together. And then the baby angels, the seraphim and the cherubim uh, flying and they were praising. Uh, some mm. of them had little instruments, you know, just, it was, that that was uh, what I was able to, what, what our Lord was able to reveal to me. And I, I, I understand that maybe to some, to different individuals, he will reveal other things. 
-hmm. Well, the Bible uh, describes at least three types of angels. And so uh, angels are of different types as described in the Bible and as you saw uh, yes. within, within heaven. Uh, and so that, that is, uh, I, I was curious as to that and some may have been curious as to what they look like, uh, those giants of, uh, of the Bible. Uh, and how they appeared in their garb and in their uh, features as well. And, and the way that you describe Noah is how I, I would picture him, you know, from the account of Noah, the story of Noah uh, accounted for in the Bible and uh, of Moses being more regal and more priestly in yes. appearance. And Ruth is one of my favorite uh, persons uh, from, from the Bible, so that she was in a reverent uh, mood, really spoke to my heart. Let us uh, just conclude this episode, Alicia, with you blessing. I have, one of the things I've got to share with our audience is that my Alicia and I have spoken uh, quite a bit just in recounting her story to me personally. And I was so heartened because the message that you convey uh, is, is of sobering account, you know, it can uh, be one that uh, certainly we would want to go there. We would want our loved ones to go there in the place that you saw those who are going over the cliff. Yeah. However, your tenderness of heart and the way that you express that impressed me as reflective of our Lord and that the Lord doesn't want them to go there either. And the Lord doesn't want to go anyone to go there, um, but it is a free will, free choice. So Alicia, you have a gift of evangelism and of teaching. Uh, there are those listening who either doubt their faith, whether they're going to be in heaven, whether they're sealed by the blood of Jesus Christ. And there are those that just out of curiosity have tuned in and they're listening or viewing this. And they're saying, you know, I don't, maybe I don't, I don't believe, you know, Jesus is the only way, the way, the truth and the life. As he said, no one comes to the Father but through him. Amen. Just don't believe that. But now that I'm kind of, oh, you know, I, I really want that. But, you know, I don't know how to get there. So let's pray. I'm going to ask you to pray, if you will, uh, a prayer. Um, you can pray whether in English or Spanish, uh, a prayer for those people to lead them to know Jesus is our Lord and Savior, so they will be on the right side, the heavenly side, when they pass from this earth and not walking off into the abyss. Yes, yes, amen, yes. Yes, Randy. Um, heavenly Father, we come before you, our community, with Mr. Randy, with all the listeners. We come before you humbly, and we ask, Lord, that you please open the hearts and the minds of all the listeners, of all the community surrounding, um, surrounding them. Please, Heavenly Father, through our Lord Jesus, through the guidance of the Holy Spirit, we ask that you please convict their hearts. Let them know, Lord, that you come with love and mercy and forgiveness continually, daily, that you are a gentleman, you wait for them, and for them not to be afraid. Each of us, Lord, in our brokenness, you already know, you recognize our hearts, and you know, Heavenly Father, our past, our present, our future actions. You know, dear Lord, and we pray, Lord, that you please help us to not doubt in you. Help us to live a life that is focused and centered in, for you and to do right by you, Lord Jesus, please. And um, I humbly ask, Lord, that, um, that I be able Lord, to, to speak now in Spanish, um, Holy Spirit, um, I do ask that you please guide me in, in praying over the community that is listening. 
and our, all our family members, all our loved ones. Espíritu Santo, le, le pedimos humildemente, por favor, guíenos diariamente en este momento. Cuando, cuando despiertemos durante el día, cuando estemos trabajando, estemos estudiando, estemos con nos, reunidos con nuestras familias. Por favor, Espíritu Santo, le pedimos humildemente. Traiga y traiga el amor que necesitamos y la fe al centro de nuestras almas y al centro de nuestros corazones para no dudar en nuestro Señor Jesucristo, en su poder, en, en todo el amor que, que Dios Padre tiene para cada uno de nosotros. Fortaleza, por favor, fortalezanos nuestra fe en, en nuestro Señor, con la ayuda de, de nuestro Señor Jesucristo, nuestro, nuestro Salvador. Muchas gracias, Señor, por todas sus bendiciones. Lo queremos mucho y lo apreciamos por cada momento en nuestras vidas. Aunque sean duras, aunque sean felices, todo lo que usted nos da es para su gloria, para hacernos más fuerte en fe, para ayudarnos a creer en usted más y más diariamente. Ayúdanos, Señor. No nos abandones. Por favor, continuamente le pedimos sus bendiciones sobre el Señor Randy su esposa, Renee, sobre su, su ministerio, sobre todo, todos los que están escuchando ahorita. Muchas gracias, Señor. Lo, lo queremos y lo amamos y, y le damos todas las alabanzas de nuestros corazones. Amén. Amén. Thank you, Alicia. You know, when, when we get to heaven, uh, whether there be different languages, uh, Or, or the same universal that crosses those languages so that we will understand each other, not just in language, uh, but also uh, that we will see each other as beloved family members. We will yes. be as one in Christ. So there are no uh, divisions that we see in this world. There are no uh, perceptions that we have of one people or another people. We are all in Christ, and that's the way, Alicia, we should live in this world, isn't it? To yes. see each other as, as our Lord sees them. It has been such a blessing to have you on this show. Um, for those, and if, uh, if you have another place you want people to go if they have questions or prayer needs, uh, but I'm going to uh, encourage now for those that would like to uh, contact Alicia Reyes, that you can go to our site, randyk.org, And you can note in the contact page any questions or prayer needs that specifically you would like Alicia uh, to know about. Um, and uh, we'll make sure that she gets, uh, gets those messages get to her. Thank you, Alicia, for joining us on this, this Heaven episode. It has been absolutely a blessing. And thank we you. pray blessings over you. And thank you for blessing our audience. God bless everyone. And uh, any last words before we go, Alicia? No, um, I just wanted to say thank you, Mr. Randy. Thank you so much for the opportunity to share my testimony. Um, I pray mm -hmm. that Heavenly Father continue to open the minds and the hearts and of, of all your listeners and of all our family members, our friends, our neighbors, our coworkers. Um, there is such a great need, especially now, When we are living in such uncertain times, there is such a great need to surrender our hearts wholeheartedly, surrender our souls, our minds, our worries in, our, in Christ our Lord, to not be afraid, yes, to cast all our worries, all our anxieties on him and come to the cross and place them, you know, kneel and spend time before him. 
Yes, that he's our healer. He's our physician. He's our counselor. Yes. And that deserves a, a great amen. Yes, amen. So again, thank you so much, uh, Alicia. Thank you for watching and listening to this broadcast. And uh, have a great day in the Lord. Thank you. Until Thank next you. time. God bless Thank you. Thank you, Randy. Likewise. Thank, Thank you. you God bless. God bless.